What's happening guys? Welcome to Don's Adventures. I'm your host Don Gregorian. We are back from Big Bear. We, were, we had a very successful fishing trip. Um, as you can see in the video I'm about to go to, uh, we caught a lot of trout and I'm gonna show you the gear I used to catch the trout because it's kind of different. Otherwise I wouldn't be repeating myself. Uh, so this time around, we're using the same setup as in we're using the Carolina rig. Uh, same test line, same, same strength test line, four pound. Um, I'm using a half ounce um, egg sinker, the Carolina keeper. However, this is what I found to be most successful, guys. Instead of always going with a two foot or two and a half foot leader, this time I used a three, maybe three and a half feet. It could even be about four feet of leader, which ex extends from here all the way down here. That's your leader. Whatever comes past the swivel or the Carolina rig. And also a change in my usual setup. This time I'm using these little power bait I guess they're called salmon eggs I'm not sure what they're called but they're little balls little soft power balls power egg balls and they're garlic scented I'm gonna put the picture up of exactly what I'm using right now so I'm using a small mosquito hook I always go with the red one. I believe it's an eagle, eagle claw laser mosquito hook. But I'm using these egg, these little egg uh, power baits, guys. They they worked amazing for me, guys. A lot of times at the lake, it's super windy. There's a lot of current, and the regular power, the power bait, the paste kind that you roll up into a ball. <laughs> Those guys just get washed away in the current or in the water. When the water's moving around, they just get washed away. So what, what happens is you cast it out and you're sitting there and waiting for a fish to bite. But you don't know what's happening in the water. And a lot of times there's so much current that, the, that your bait is just constantly moving around and the stuff, the substance gets washed away. So you're sitting there thinking you still have the bait on and you're waiting for a fish to bite even though your hook is completely exposed and it's sank to the ground and there's no way you're gonna catch a fish like that so pro tip uh, you guys seen me experiment with a lot of bait a lot of different types of setup this was the most successful setup for me thus far these guys will not wash away they will not sink on you they will always be floating and another thing is there's other types of these little power bait balls. However, these guys are the soft kind. As you can see, I could squish that. They're super soft. There's other ones that are kind of plasticky. They're harder. And you'll see some of them that are half translucent with little sprinkles of glitter in there and half solid color. Those might work, but they're harder in shape. These are the softest ones. Guys, these kicked ass up there and what I also did in addition to just using this was I took a little bit of my garlic paste power plate paste the green green one and I rubbed it all over this so not only you have the ball which also is scented uh, you have the paste all around the ball and that's kind of chumming the water it's kind of like letting off a scent trail and uh, it's giving a cloud of scent all around where your bait is sitting so guys this setup kicked ass long leader I use a half ounce egg sinker but you could go with a quarter ounce you could with a heck you could go with an ounce it's all up to you and uh, it all depends on how far you are from the water how far you are up on the shore and all that stuff so for me half ounce egg sinker always works it doesn't get washed around too much so that was my setup guys 
Now let me show you an, another addition to my setup, um, to my camping gear actually. So uh, this I'm really excited about. Guys, let me introduce you to the Camprite tent cot, the oversized version. There's different versions of this. There's the twin size or double tent, whatever it's called. And then there's like the smaller one for kids. There's different versions. You can find everything you need on Camprite website. But this is the one I ordered. It's the Camprite oversized tent cot. I've never been more comfortable taking shelter somewhere uh, in comparison to using a tent or using just a regular cot. This kick ass, guys. This is a dynamite setup. Now let me show you what it is, what's inside. Let me pan down just a little bit so you guys could see everything. It's the simplest setup of any tent or cot or a combination of two. Everything is in one. It's a, it's a bed, it's a cot, it's a tent, and a sleeping platform all in one and ladies are gonna really love this why because it sits up off of the ground so this is really cool for skittish women who don't like to go camping or go outdoors so you guys will love this it comes with a carrying case you can zip it open this is the fly for it this is for uh it's like a cover for the rain it's called a fly and it's got pockets and all kinds of stuff on the, it's got windows on the uh, fly itself. Now there are two poles that you have to take out before you damage those. So that's one. And there's the other one. You get two poles. You don't want to break those, those are going to be pretty hard to find. But you could have probably order it from the website itself. And I believe this weighs 35 pounds altogether. That's a carrying case, really cool carrying case. And this is everything. Boom. Really easy to carry. And the easiest way I found to put this together is lay it on the side and it opens up just like that okay so let me actually flip it around because the entrance is on the other side <coughs> just open it up just like that and in the back you have these clips so there's harnesses and clips that are built in what you do is first thing you do is you it has four legs okay first thing you do is pull that leg out that stays like that so you don't have to do anything this one opens up just like that you put the harness through it through the first little opening right there and bam it just clips onto the bottom of that leg now you could adjust this harness in the beginning it's probably not going to be the right size for it to reach this leg over here but I've already adjusted this in Big Bear so it just clips on perfectly right there same thing on this side guys this leg opens up this harness goes through this leg opens up, and it stretches, and clips on right there. That's all it takes. That's all guys, it's all set up now. Now you just put it flat on the ground, just like that. Now these are the, uh, they're also, uh, it's like a frame, 
that you need to clip these guys on. It has three clips. All three of them get clipped on that frame. I like to pull these out to stretch them. Let me just check the camera, make sure you guys can see all this stuff. Yeah, that's good. You got another frame on this side. Pull this up. Clip it on. Really durable clips too. Everything is like legit on this. Nothing is cheesy on this set setup, guys. It's really durable. So that's the back, guys. Right? No. Never mind. I just realized that there is no back or front because it has entrances on both sides. I didn't know that. I thought it had only one entrance, guys. It has both, it has two entrances. Oh, that's amazing. See? It's got entrances on both sides. That's really cool. Okay, so it's got entrances on both sides. It's got bug netting on both sides. Separate zippers for the bug net and separate zippers for the, the covers. Okay, for the windows. It's got, four, it's got two more windows. One on this side, which also has a bug net. Really big, thick, durable zippers. There you go, bug net. And also, same thing here. Bug net and the cover. And you can roll these up, okay? You can roll that up. Let me show you, just like that. And it's got little ties, okay? So you roll that up, you put your tie through, and bam okay that's that's for uh creating the uh opening so the air could go through so, so you're not suffocating in there this is where the this is where these poles come in <coughs> this is where these poles come in guys on uh the clips on all four corners this little point will go into a hole on those clips. Okay, my friends, so let's go on the inside, but let me give you a 360 overview of the Camp Right, the oversized tent cot, okay? That's what we're working with. So you get the spelling right and all that stuff, okay? Let's go around and give you a nice 360 of everything. And as you can see, you're about a foot off the ground. So no worrying about things crawling into the tent, no worrying about uneven surfaces where you're setting up the tent, uh, moisture on the ground, or anything uh, that might you know deter you from going out and camping somewhere this thing sits up on the ground keeps you off the moisture the cold the temperature the bugs all that stuff now let's get inside and show you the inside it's big guys this thing is huge I, I was so comfortable at Big Bear. Uh, I had to set up an emergency shelter. I carry this thing in the car all the time. Anytime I'm out fishing, this thing is coming with me. Just in case I need to shelter myself from the sun, shelter myself from the rain, whatever the situation may be, I carry this thing with me. No. It's, so let me lay down. Okay. As you can see, I'm about six feet tall, guys. Exaggerating, like 5'11", but with shoes on and stuff, I'm about six feet tall, like with boots on. So, 
I mean, look, I, I have so much space over here, yet I have space, look, where my foot is. I have so much space here, okay? So this is huge. It's got pockets. Oh, this came so handy, guys. These pockets were so handy. I put all my, my phone, my uh, USB charger. Um, here's a couple over here, my keys. I put all the important stuff I carry with me in there. It's got a little tie over here to hang a light. Uh, it's got a bunch of ties everywhere in here, as you can see. You can just hang a bunch of stuff in here. It's super comfortable. And I'm laying in here. I usually use a foam mattress. So that opens up and I put that folding mattress in here or in my tent or wherever I go. But that thing fits perfectly in here. And I use the pillow as well. However, you don't actually need anything. This is so comfortable. This canvas, it's so comfortable. This canvas that it comes with is so comfortable. You can just lay down and it's great. Comfortable, I could just sleep right here the way it is, as is. So check out the Camp Ride website. Get the one that fits you, fits your needs and your family's needs. A lot of people use this for truck camping. Instead of getting those expensive overhead truck tents, whatever they're called, people actually, I've seen people using this on a truck tent. So guys, let me show you how you put the fly on. I forgot to mention the fly. So the fly itself has a single entry point. So you have to make sure you got the entry, uh, entrance uh, section of the fly to where your entrance, uh, whatever, whichever side on your cot you want. Okay, so you gotta match the entrance with the entrance. So first thing you do is Find your entrance, which on this fly is on this side. So that's where my entrance is. I have two entrances on the tent, but I have one entrance on the fly. So that's my entrance on the tent. This is my entrance on the fly. So just bring that over. Super simple. Okay, just like that. It's got two little rubber, it's got two little uh, stretchy points, like little uh, stretchy areas on both ends. It hooks up, those stretchy points hook up to the corner. Okay. Well, I put it on the wrong way, look at that. No, I didn't. That's the entrance. Anyway, bloopers. And then this side pull down onto this side. And that's your rain protection right there, guys. That's your. Fly. Well, let me give you a 360 with the fly on. See the back side is closed because the fly has only one entrance point, entrance point, which is in the front. It has okay. windows with bug nets on the fly itself. So you can completely open your own window on the other side, but it has windows for the bug net. It's got this little soft padding and this is waterproof. The rain will just drip off this point. Got another window on this side, same thing with the bug net. So they got you covered on all occasions, whether if it's raining, whether if, uh, if it's a super hot day, you open the windows up. Uh, this thing is just incredible. Um, so, Camp Right, if you're looking to sponsor someone that's going to be using your product all the time, I'm your man, Don's Adventures. Let me know. Okay, email me.
and also guys when I was talking about setting up in the tent let's say I'm just setting up something right I'm setting up my gear look at this this is it's so perfect I've always wanted a tent I always wanted a tent caught but I never thought that they would make something that fits exactly my needs. Like, this is perfect, guys. I can't give enough compliments to this. It's a genius idea. It's super sturdy. And uh, I wouldn't go with any other tent cot. It's just right. It's perfectly built. Anyway, so let me take you guys back to Big Bear. Let me show you how effective that new setup was and um, let me show you uh, how many fish we catch and how everything was so good last night and let's come back here and let's do a little picnic a little cookout and I'm gonna cook you guys some nice little meals all right see you in a bit fish on guys finally god damn it Oh, it's pretty good. There we go. Ah. Not bad. First fish of the trip, guys. It ain't that bad. It's a nice rainbow. Fish on, guys. Pretty good. Oh, shit. What is this? What? I guess it's pretty good. Oh shit. Come on in, baby. <laughs> oh shit, it got off. Oh no, it's here. <laughs> oh shit, the big ass fish. Come on in, bro. <laughs> oh wow, it's a nice fish. Oh yeah. That's a very nice fish. Oh shit. <laughs> wow. There we go, man. That's a pretty good fish in my book. Perfect for a catch and cook. Man, we can get some fillets off that. Right on. What was that on? Oh, Jesus. This guy made me bleed. Uh, that was on. <laughs> that was on those little balls. Uh, bro, chill. Jesus Christ, bro. Uh, that was on those little power bait balls, guys. The little soft ones. Uh, chartreuse color. Right on. We got ourselves to catch and cook. He's still going crazy. Uh -oh. Come on. Oh, got it. Yes. 
Okay. It feels small. But it could be big. You never know. Pretty small, but whatever. We've only caught three of them. They got it. Oh. We got it, guys. Pretty good fish, not bad. Yeah, definitely a nice size. It's gonna tear up the line, but... There you go. Man. Shit. Oh shit, never mind. It's on. What the hell? Oh shit. Alright guys. What the uh as you can see there's a fish on. Stuck in the weeds, guys. Let's pull this one in. Cause this one was stuck with the other guy. If we could double hook this fish, there's no way it's getting away. Okay, never mind. The thing is on hook. Guys, I've been catching every fish. I've been catching every fish on a long leader. The leader has to be at least three feet long. That's the conclusion. I should get in, man. That's cold. I'm just gonna loosen up the line to see if the fish would swim away. We'll see what happens. Right now it's stuck in those weeds. Dude, we got him out. A little bit of patience paid off. We got him out. Take that out. Very nice fish. Oh, I think it's heavy. Anyway, that's our fourth one, guys. Man, that thing splattered all over my face. Let me, guys, give you a... I mean, let me give you guys a preview of what we got. 
in the live well. <laughs> Technically the live well. There we go. Four in total. I think we're gonna stick around until we get that fifth one. But yeah, that's looking good, guys. I'm pretty impressed with that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna stick at it and get that fifth one. Otherwise, I'm just gonna call the night. We'll see what happens. I'll see you guys soon. Fish on, guys. That's a big one. This one ain't a joke. This is a serious fish. Oh, shit. Ass fish. That's a big ass fish. Oh my god. That's what we're talking about. Oh my god. Guys, I have done the most moronic thing in the world. I can't believe I did this. I mean, I, let me show you what I have for my setup. I have frying pans, I have skewers, I have everything you can imagine, seasoning, everything you can imagine guys. I have a bunch of stuff in here, a bunch of stuff in the cooler. Look at this setup for flying fish. I mean look at all this. <laughs> I had the most perfect, I had the most perfect picnic set up. I forgot one important thing, super important thing. I forgot my knife. So how am I going to fillet the fish without a knife? It's not going to happen. I got to pack everything up and go home and do everything at home instead. And I'm going to miss out on this beautiful day. Look at this. Man. Sometimes when you just rush things, right? Jeez. All right, guys, I'll see you back at the house where we're gonna do our catch and cook inside. It's gonna be boring, but whatever, let's do it. Oh, guys, I didn't give up yet. I drove down to the gas station and got myself a knife. Now, I don't know how sharp this is gonna be, or whether it's gonna fillet this fish at all. But it's worth to try. All right, let's do this. All right, my friends, let's see if this knife is sharp at all, or are we gonna just waste our time here? If it passes the, the nail test, and this is the nail test, I would consider it to be, oh yeah. You see the bits and pieces of nail I got on there? <laughs> That's good to go. That is good to go. Look at the size of this guy. All right. Let's go ahead and fillet out this fish. Get some nice fillets out of it. Wow, it's not easy. It's doable, but it's not easy. I would definitely rather have my fillet knives, but... A 
Look at the color of this meat though, guys. Wow. I'll show you in just a second. That's gorgeous, man. I'm gonna take my time, get every bit of meat off of this flay. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous filet, guys. Wowzers. Okay, let's knock off the filet on the other side and start chopping them up into bits and I'll show you what I'm cooking in just a second. So there it is, guys. We knocked both filets off the fish. I did as good as I can with that tiny, chinky little knife. Let's take the pin bones out and the pin bones I got it out on this one already and as you can see it kind of runs along uh, the top portion of the flay just about 60% down on the flay so it starts right at top over here and ends about right here and they're always curved towards the top 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 end of the fish okay so they're not flat they're like kind of like tilted towards the top like this should just come out just like that if I had the time to pluck out all the bones I would but we're not losing that much meat just a tiny bit couple more and that's it that's all the pin bones. It's not that much meat. It's a significant amount, but it's not do or die. Now, let's get rid of the skin. And it's always best to put it at the edge of your working table wherever you're going to be working on the fish. Make sure it's flat. And just run your knife flat. Right along the flay. You could curve it a little bit. And there's the skin. Let's do the same with this guy. 
and I always do tail side first. You always do tail side, because it's easier. Just get rid of this fin over here. Because that's gonna come in the way. Some people like to poke a hole in the skin. I can't even poke a hole with this knife, man. Anyway, I'll just hold on with my nails. The, what bit of nails I have. And then just run all along. Kind of butchered this one. Left some meat. But with this knife, man. There we go. Salvage that. And that's good enough. Man, these meat cutter bees. They're annoying. Get out of here, dude. I don't want to kill it, but... God damn it. He's working right where my hand is. Hopefully this w wind will calm down too. Look how good this meat looks. It looks like I'm working with like tuna or like salmon or something. But it's just a trout, it's just trout, rainbow trout. Okay, we're just about done chopping this up. If I see a big chunk, I'm gonna chop it up. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. Let's put our meat in this little container. Bam, look at that. Guys, we're gonna go in and crack a cold one for America for 4th of July, Independence Day. We're gonna celebrate the Republic. Cheers to all the men and women of the armed forces. To all the first responders, everybody involved. Okay, let's start. And we're making this, we're making everything from scratch, guys. I don't have anything prepared. So, this is your just basic all purpose flour. We're gonna make a little mound, like this. Okay. Just like that. And then, what you wanna do is, make a little volcano just like that we're gonna make a artificial volcano and we're gonna crack an egg or two in the middle That should be enough, actually. No, 
It's not. One more. I feel like that's not enough. That's a lot of flour. We're gonna add some salt now. Just a little bit of salt. Just a little bit, a little bit more. Add it to the flour too. I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning and incorporate that in there. Now, with this side of the, the spoon, we're gonna start mixing this up. Just right in the middle. As it's spinning, it's picking up flour. So we're at a stage now where we could work with our fingers and we're gonna knead the flour into shape now. Cool. Now I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna put it in the cooler. Let it sit in a cool space for 10 minutes. So whilst we wait for those, for the dough to cure, we're gonna chop up some veggies. Let's give these guys a rinse. There we go. Fresh green onions and some red cabbage. So this is what I'm gonna do. Tiny little bits. not bad. Can't complain about that. Not bad at all. Line up your green onions. Just get rid of that bulb completely. That's all we need. Okay. Now we're gonna bring our fish out. A gorgeous fish. Gonna dump all our veggies inside. Let's give that a mix. Oh, before I give it a mix, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of ginger paste. Mmm. There we go. Just a little portion of ginger paste. A little bit of sriracha. I 
I could eat that as is. <laughs> oh man. And just a little bit of mayo, guys. A Japanese keepy mayo. Perfect. Let's give this a mix. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Okay, let's put this away. Let that sit for a little bit. Let's get the dough out and see what the dough is up to. Guys, so the dough has cured. It's looking gorgeous. And it's got a bits and little bits of uh, flakes of the seasoning I put in there, the Weber seasoning I put in there. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and roll it out. So we're gonna use this jar to roll this dough out. Man, that little flour, that little bit of flour could go a long way. guys I got oh I'm running low on battery just rolled it out with this jar that's all I had but what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut little uh, square pieces but uh, we'll get some squares out for the dumplings actually like little circles I want to utilize as much as dough as we have so um, I'm gonna use little squares okay because that's the best way to manage space okay guys so I got a bunch of dough here for the dumplings I mean a bunch and I got two pieces for the flatbread and I'm gonna roll them out a little bit more um, rule of thumb is you have to see your finger through it like you have to it has to be almost transparent but I'm not going by rule of thumb I'm just gonna use what we have because I feel like we could expand it a little bit more just use your imagination guys food is like art and just use your imagination and utilize the resources to make it happen you know So that is super thin. Any thinner than that, we're gonna put holes in Get it. Get our fish back onto the scene. Gosh, that smells so good. Okay, that's about 50% more. So, we're gonna roll this up. Now the dough will stretch, it's very forgiving. So, we could go ahead and pack that in. Seal the bottom end and the top end. Bring that up. Turn this around, just like a burrito. Now what I like to do is wet my finger, put a line of water on that side, okay? That's gonna be our glue to this experiment. Seal both sides off. Seal that off by pinching it. And 
egg roll is pretty much a big dumpling, guys. There you go. A pocket of goodness. Now, let's get working on our dumpling. Let's see. Yeah, we'll use it that way. Put some right there in the middle. A little bit more. Just imagine um, whether you could seal it off by pinching it, whether you have enough space to seal it or you don't. That's how you get an idea of what you could accomplish. Push that in, start pinching and sealing. Not the most perfect looking dumpling, but you get the idea. By the way, I switched up from the Budweiser to a mind haze by Firestone. Let's get one more. We'll, we'll get a few more, but I'm not gonna show you all that right now. Because this video would literally be three hours if I were. Wet the edges with the juice of the fish. Bring it together. That ginger smell, man. You guys gotta, you have to put ginger in your fish. Boom. I've been meaning to do this video, this type of a cookout for a long time. Just haven't had the chance. Whips. And that cabbage is gonna go perfect with the dumplings and with the egg roll you have to have cabbage and onion uh, green onions otherwise you're wasting everybody's time guys i am so excited about this what you could do is after you create a little pocket like this all right. After you got yourself a little pocket like that, you could add some more in there. Like one more little chunk. You know, you just push it in there. Because you already have that space. Now you just have to fill it up, fill it up. Another gorgeous dumpling. <laughs> well, you get the you get the idea, guys. I'm running out of battery, so let me go ahead and uh, get all this together and fire up the grill. Guys, pro tip number one. I got a bunch of pro tips. You don't need a lighter to light these guys. Just use a flint and a striker. Boom, it's on. Pro tip number two, use your tiny water bottles for oil. Store your oil, store whatever you carry. I use peanut oil. 
because it's got a high uh, high flash point, whatever it's called. Let's lower the the ginormous egg roll in there. And we'll go ahead and put our little dumplings in there too. Look at that. These are all done. We're gonna let them rest on the napkin for a second. I am excited about this guy. Alright guys, time to dig in. Let's start with a dumpling. I got some chili sauce and I uh, made a little um, spicy mayo. So let's experiment with the chili sauce first. Oh wow. Wow. Guys, that's incredible. That's incredible. Oh my God. You guys have to go out and make this. Guys, these are absolutely delicious. Look at that. Mm. I will 100% make that again in the future. Let's try with the spicy mayo a little bit. Oh man, that's good. Mm. Guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I used to say I don't like, I don't care about my subscribers and I, I don't care if you subscribe or not. I actually do care. So go ahead and subscribe because this is what I'm doing this for. This is what the delivery is for, is for you guys. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. So you get a notification every time I drop a video. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. That's amazing.